Hello and welcome back. So this is um, the second video in my um, video uh, uh, describing my experience after having now a year um, spent with these Lancelot speakers, which you see here. Um, if you haven't caught um, part one of this video, um, it will have a lot of good information in there. I've dealt with this, uh, which is some mid busting, the perks of mono, and also the advantages and and and. Uh, um, of DIY versus buying or doing known designs and the pitfalls with known designs. Um, so if you're interested, let's skip back to um, the, the first part of this series. Otherwise, what we're going to talk about today is some breakthrough sound qualities that I had, um, experiences that I had with um, the Lancelot speaker, some learnings, which I will share with you. So um, hope that hopefully benefits your part. And then um, we'll go into a couple of crossover design tips and I'll show you also the crossover that I've got currently on the Lancelot speaker. Um, I won't do the introduction to the Lancelot speaker itself, I did it in part one and there's all the videos on my channel as well. Just type in Lancelot and you'll find enough information. So, some breakthrough experiences. So, I had two breakthrough experiences, I'll start with that. And um, one of them is this one. So this is an all tube recording and if you look back to my uh, catalog of videos you'll you'll find one is I'll, I'll uh, show it to you it as well but this is an all tube recording and when I play it on my amp and then over the speakers I basically got an all end to end from recording to um to, to um the reproduction on the speakers to the Congo woofer I have got tubes everywhere in the chain and since I've heard this I now can sort of detect whether they had a, a transistor in, in the disc cutter. Same recording, but different disc cutter. And so, or, or I can hear that there were transistor amplifiers in between. Um, having heard this, it really got me in touch with the feel of different technologies and sort of, you know, knowing sort of what digital brings, what op amps bring, what transistors bring, what bad transistor uh, designs bring, what tubes bring. And once you start to distinguish it, it is very easy to start forming your path and you go like, oh, this is my path, this is that. And then even more so, and I'll get into it, is, is how your own system reacts to these different things and whether it fails or that it actually takes all of these things into the stride. But more on that a bit later. Now the second experience, very different. This is, this is not vinyl, but it's a CD. It's Eva Cassidy, Nightbird. It's a double CD, very nice CD. Some audiophiles also highly praise it. Um, but regardless, what I took away from this one is a very different experience to that than the Sinatra album. This just sounds like a live club. It, it's just mixed in such a way. It has a very good clarity. Um, nice band. Um, it's played very well. Eva Cassidy really does an amazing job singing this um, and playing here. But it felt like a live, live gig. I was in my study and I was just listening. I was like, wow, it's like I'm just in a back room in a, in a, in a live venue. That's how it sounds. And when you go, in the, 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 you know, on a live gig, you go, oh, this is a rolling deep bass that is a bit amplified, but it's controlled. It's easy. And the, these speakers just do the same thing. They just, I mean, whether this is Sinatra or it's a live club and you've got this bass just rolling through the, through the house, it just does it. And this is CD, so I'm using my cheap Moran CD48 player to play this, but it sounded fantastic. Even unmodified, I mean, I've got a modification project going on, which I'll share with you probably later. But, amazing. So, and the thing is, at non-stage with these speakers, with both recordings, with lots of recordings, I feel no need to tweak the bass level, no need to, 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 to do anything with the treble. It's just the way they now are, have been configured. I never find anything that I think, oh, oh I should fix this, or oh, there's a bit too much of this, or too No, none of that is happening. It's just fine. It, the, the, the music and the source, all of these things are fine. Hello, Rain. Hello. 
So all of these things are completely fine. And, and, and yes, they're distinct, but they're never a nuisance. And, and, um, and, and really, I would say the breakthrough is that a good system you really don't want to touch. Like you just don't want to upgrade. You don't want to get a new component in because it, they bring, it brings you so much satisfaction. And you don't need to have these critical combinations of this record sounds good, but that sounds shit. No, my experience now is that it can take a wide range of sources and, and, and types of media and it will still sound good and you still don't have the need to fix it. Yeah, it can have something. My CD player at the moment, the highs are, are a bit, I don't know. And I think it's maybe the op-amp. We'll see uh, because my first mod will come up very so shortly. Um, hopefully over the next couple of days. And and so it's not ideal, but it's never to the point that I, that I feel I, I should turn some knob and adjust something. So that's a breakthrough. And... and um, and really that sort of leads to my other point here is that the, 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 the state of audio where you don't feel you need to change anything. And I, I, I'm, and I would say if, if you take away anything of these two videos about my lens sort speaker, generally when you don't want to change your system, that is the, that, that is the state, that is what you should strive for. And if you have some unrest, you've been, been fooled. Um, you've, you, you're on the wrong path. And um, if you let that guide yourself and hopefully you have access to the resources and, and choices and maybe skills to do some uh, DIY or, or pick your components. But if you don't have that, you're on a very unsatisfying path. And, you, and believe me, I've been there because I've, I've cycled through, for example, 20 headphones and 10 decks. And, um, and it was a treadmill that just didn't have a solution inside, I can tell you. Okay, then something else. So um, I spoke about DIY in part one, um, but one of the things that high quality drivers are a self guide to a good result. And um, Rainy wants to sit with me. And Hello. So let's, and one of the things that really helped me through this process, I think, and that this is important, if you get some really high quality drivers like I have, and um, so I've got the Altec 414s and the, the Electrovoice DH1A compression driver. It's a large format compression driver. When you have very revealing, um, very high quality units, they will help you find the imperfections because they're so transparent they will reveal everything they will reveal a bad box design because the dissonant factor in your in your enclosure will be hurt the dissonant factor in your crossover the dissonant factor in your amp or your source and you will get to this with your as you get into this process of diy you will get to know where it's coming from um, eventually um, it will take you a couple of months, probably, um, and maybe I'm just slow, I, I don't know, but they will help you. So if you find these drivers, and, you, and what I did when I got them, I just hooked them up to a small amp, and I just played them individually without any crossover whatsoever, and I listened to them. And if you can hear, a pros, uh, uh, if you can hear something in the sound, and, and you say, yeah, you know, th th there's a promise of something, then you can proceed with this. And of course, they need to be sort of matched a little bit because if the efficiencies are way off, um, you, you, you run into some pro problems. Not, they're not insurmountable, but the best thing is if these efficiencies come a little bit closer, at least. But what I found is that because they contrast, when they're so perfect by themselves and when they're well applied, you, you start to pick up on everything that is dissonant. And so... It becomes a self guiding principle. It's a bit unsettling sometimes because you're forced to make your changes. And so my nine months in tweaking these was always driven by something like that, to something not right. And whether that's intermodulation distortion, it's, it's a resonance, uh, anything, but they help you through the way. So starting with high quality drivers is, is a must uh, in, my, in, in my view at the moment. Now, another thing, that I discovered, and this is a final point about um, the sound quality breakthroughs that I had, is when I doubled this up and I made this into a single speaker, if you will. Um, so I doubled the surface from this model and I added this one here. 
so this one doesn't have a compression driver um, and so it became 8 ohm that one was already 8 ohms so this 2 16 ohm drivers parallel they're now 8 ohms I tried them in series but it wasn't a good idea um, so I wanted to try really high impedance um, but parallel sounds much better so what I took away from the, the, the massive improvement that I saw, because I thought, you know what, two drivers, I'm, I'm crossing them quite high. Do I get interference, um, you know, cancellation patterns and so on? But it was extremely mild. And, and, and instead what happened is, is, is the system became far more articulate. Um, the presence was far, far better um, when I doubled up on these. So my takeaway is and also sort of seeing that i've got a large formula i've got a three inch compression driver and here these are two 12 inch drivers is that surface diaphragm area diaphragm area matters like there's just an ease and an articulation and a, a, i think it's the coupling to the air i mean imagine you've got a three inch driver versus a maybe three quarter inch dome tweeter i mean that dome tweeter, how is it going to move the rest of the air? The thing, well, this one has a, um, a a three inch diaphragm moving, and then it's getting compressed. So the coupling to the air is extremely efficient, orders of magnitude more efficient. You know, sometimes maybe a hundred times more efficient in coupling to the air than a dome tweeter. Here, the same thing: two big twelve inches, and then a huge cabinet space that also slightly will resonate um, or vibrate with the woofers and, and transfer that energy that, that, that you send to it to the air and couple it to the air with very subtle movements because it doesn't need to move much because the surface area is so huge. And I, I, I think it's, it's, it's of, I'm, I'm, I'm now on the path that I think, you know what, surface area really matters in, in, in reproduction of sound. It just gets easier, more natural. And, and you know, technically, if you look at this, Distortion, if you have excursion, distortion rises way more uh, with excursion um, anyway, so progressively gets a lot worse. And, um, and so any system that reduces excursion, um, I think is highly desirable if you can manage the overall sound quality, because obviously with, with you, you do get interference um, at some point. Um, but here with crossing at 2100 hertz I, I don't feel it impacts um, this was a huge improvement stepping up to these two now um, yeah then, then we're going to look at the crossover this is the final part um, and then, then we're done in this series or in this two-part series about my learnings from the, the, the Lancelot speaker project and there's some crossover tips so first of all avoid complexity and I think face uh, face behavior is extremely important so um, if the face face changes are too drastic it will so sound um, it will sound shit really and um, what I also noticed is uh, I had a complex um, two-step crossover on the on the on the um, compression driver so it had a response like this electrically to compensate for its factors and now it's just a uh, one shelf filter and when i made that change it was uh, it, it, the clarity and i think intermodulation i don't know what happened but the, the clarity was so, so much better um became so much more natural um and it was i think all all down to the the, the phasing behavior um and phase shifts uh, minimizing phase shifts um, minimize reverse so as I talked about before efficiency managing the, the drivers is, is uh, helps um, minimize the use of resistors just don't go with loss um, try to find something where you have minimal loss of, of, of the power that you send it because uh, speakers are highly lossy anyway so um, oh and do not start with premium parts until you're done so I bought actually a couple of uh, very very not very, very decent um, capacitors, and in the end, I never ended up using them. Only in my first designs. As you start this project with unknown uh, driver combos, <coughs> you 
Yes, you can use XSIM or another program to, to calculate the, the crossover points, but I can guarantee you the best crossover point is not the one that the computer cal calculates. And so just be prepared that your final tweaks will just be done by ear and that the values that you end up with are very different. So what I do is use decent components, get the balance right, and then once you're done, you can go to high quality um, uh, things. Just don't spend your money on, on exotic materials and think you, you got your design covered. Um, because you got the rest of your chain, you got your room, um, the age of your drivers or something, like all kinds of factors come into this and um, you'll end up with the different values than you think you will. So don't, don't go overboard and, um, and waste your money. No, then the final thing, the design of the crossover. So here we go. I'll draw it up for you. Uh, so here we've got the inputs. Here we've got the tweeter compression driver. And here we've got the woofer, the two woofers. So the two woofers, um, they have a Zobel network. And I've done them for both. I could have done them individual near the woofer. But I've, at the moment, they're just in the crossover. So that's just a 7.5 ohm in series with 25 uh, UF. I think it's actually the plus or minus I just refer this is reversed but and a two uh, and a, a big air core just um, copper one millimeter two milli Henry um, thing to do a 6 dB filter and this is really needed because the the impedance really rises and this would almost the, the, that impedance rising almost negates the effect of that so you really need a Zobel network and this has I found very minimal impact on the sound quality it's actually surprisingly uh, the, the negative the degradation is, is minimal and then here at the high end um, I ended up with a um, 0 0.45 UF um, capacitor just in, um, in series with the, with the compression driver and so that does a 6 dB filtering um, a, little, a high pass uh, here and I've got an attenuated by 25 ohms or 24.8 ohms really it's two resistors in parallel but um, to attenuate the signal and if I wanted to improve the crossover this this would be um, an auto form would be much better um, to, to, to serve this um, of course um, and I could take better quality or to actually put an L pad in here however as it stands 25 5 ohm is pretty benign um, I had higher values before when I had more complex um, uh, design and that was definitely de detrimental to the sound quality so at the moment I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with it and it's uh, revealing enough for for example if you saw part one for different music sources and technologies to be heard so it's obviously still extremely revealing um, despite maybe some degradation in the signal however of course the tube amp will love it because it will get 8 ohms uh, in series with 25 ohms so it sort of see, it sees um, you know something maybe like a 30 to 35 ohms total resistance and um, it of course a tube amp will, will perform really well into a higher impedance so it's um, it, it it will love it however if you had a if you were driving this with a um, um, with a uh, feedback uh, or transistor amplifier based amplifier um, it might not like this uh, um, higher resistance here because it would seriously um, reduce the output. So that's it. Um, so those are my learnings. So it has been a wonderful journey, really. I can recommend it to anybody to, um, you know, once you've got your a bit of standard woodworking skills, um, this is, if you want to progress yourself and upskill yourself, I can hardly recommend the, 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 the Lancelot project. It's a big speaker. However, it's an extremely satisfying speaker and the journey will be like, will, will deliver you more insights than you can even imagine. Um, so I hope I sort of lifted the veil a little bit on that, what you can expect. Um, to me, it was a long, uh, not a long journey. It was actually very short. It's just gone really quick. And I must thank also Janus from Real World Audio to, who has given me hints and pointers throughout the way. It, I mean, it's not like he held my hand. I did most of the stuff myself, but sometimes, you know, his comments and his comments in videos, all of those things have, have, have slightly contributed to me being able to get to my results quicker. And um, 
and yes so that's uh, but but really it's been a wonderful journey and i now have such satisfactory um, system and that's largely due to the um, both the tube amp to directly heat the tube amp but also um very much these speakers because they're they're um I would say normally they are the bottleneck to your system, are your speakers, and your and maybe your speak amp or amp project. So, um, yeah. So rest me really to thank Janos from Real World Audio for his, um, you know, his support and also to coming up with this design and being so generous in in sharing his knowledge. And um, I hope uh, sort of having a, you know maybe to be these videos you have another person who's uh, sort of followed his part and and and. You know, I, I I don't want to change my system that much at the moment, so um, and that that has been a result that I've been looking for for years and years and years, and um, and and now I'm getting the sense with that, and and it and it has quieted me, me down in that regard, and being more deliberate now in my approach rather than just shooting this deck, this deck, this deck, and then ah, change it again. So. If you want to escape that process, um, this this is one of the ways to um, help you. Um, I don't know all the ways, but this is a thing that how it worked for me. Anyway, I'll be signing off now. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, watching. Um, I hope um, you found this useful. And if you have any questions for me, post them in the comments. I'll get to you. And um, otherwise, have a brilliant day. And I'll hope to catch you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.